Is it really possible to launch a no-code app while working full-time? I mean, you see and hear about other people doing it, but let's be honest, they've got to be destroying their health, their work, or their social lives in the process, right? Well, here's the deal. You can learn how to build a no-code app and even launch it within a matter of months. You just have to know the right way to do it. So in this video, we're walking through the exact tactics other founders are using to launch their own apps right now. I want you to steal from them so you can do the same. So first, let me start by saying, if you are struggling to find the time to shift focus toward starting your app, pushing development toward your first launch, you are not alone. This is a hard thing to do. But I wanna show you just a few examples of the apps founders just like you have built by incorporating some of the tactics we're going to go over. Keep in mind, every app starts out as an MVP and the ones you're about to see will and have evolved from that starting point over time. So this is the distrust appraisal tool built by one of our own clients, Joseph. And at the time of recording this video, he actually just launched into his beta testing period and has already generated over $30,000 from the app. Now, this app essentially helps teams communicate better uh, by building trust within their organizations. And he did a great job of really just keeping his product refined, um, keeping a narrow scope on the first version and moving really quickly into his launch. So here's another one. Interio app was built by our client Darius, who operates a service-based business offering custom curtain and blind solutions. Now he initially built this app for his own company's use, but he decided to very quickly package it up into a SaaS solution and offer it to other companies within his niche. And it's essentially a um, an operational software for managing jobs and clients, as you can see here, for creating quotes, custom quotes, and for uh, managing inventory. We also have Homeflow built by our client, Laura, and this app essentially helps you manage the real estate purchasing or renting process from start to finish. So, you know, you could spend tons of time looking for properties, but what happens after that? Well, this helps you um, store all the properties that you find and then takes you all the way through to actually purchasing or renting the property, including connecting with professionals who help you along the way so you can work with your real estate professional in the app as well. And here's another one. So the Simply Care app was built by our client, Alex, and I'm on the current landing page here. And as you can see right now, it's in an early access period but this has actually come after a number of iterations from the initial app she built when going through our build a scale program. So back at that time, she built an app to help people who were helping to care for senior citizens track and manage their health. And she initially built that as kind of like a jumping off point to seeing where she should expand and take that uh, software in the future. Now, she ended up being really successful with it and grew that company to a team of nine at this point. They participated in a countrywide study with the app. And as you can see here, they even secured almost uh, about a million in funding to explore kind of where to take the app from there. And so now they are about to come out with a new version of the app um, or an iterated version and are continuing to really make a significant impact on their market. Now, these are just several examples and there are plenty more. I'm actually going to link to a showcase page down below where you can take a look at tons of other examples of what founders are building. And the reason why I want to share this with you is just so that you can see whatever it is that you have kind of in limbo right now, whatever app idea you have, it's very possible for you to build and launch it even while you're working or even running a business as well. The question is, of course, how do you do that? Well, the first tactic to use is setting the right milestones for your app's development. For example, with our own clients, 
we break their app's development up into six main phases, starting with a scope that is strategic, realistic, and achievable, moving into the database structure, which is really the foundation of your app, putting together the page structure, um, the navigation, enabling a user creation function within the app, moving on to the custom features, the bread and butter for your unique app, and then moving into a testing and ultimately the launch period. Now, during that time, we are making sure the value proposition of the app is refined and then the user outreach is starting before the app actually launches. Breaking up development into milestones like this creates a logical order for you to approach each main phase of an app's development. This is opposed to trying to just tackle everything at once, once which can be really overwhelming. And that is actually how we find most people trying to navigate their app's development on their own. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this useful so far, then I have a free extended training that I want you to bookmark and head to next. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. And in this free extended training, you're actually going to start taking the individual steps necessary to go from idea to app. This is including things like scoping your app, learning correct development methodology, actually starting to use no-code tools like the Bubble platform. You're gonna see what other non-tech founders are building as their first apps. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and head there after this video. Now adding to that, the second tactic is to set the correct milestones for your skill building as well. One of the reasons for creating those development milestones in the specific order I showed you, aside from that being a strategic way to approach the development itself, is because it's also a strategic way to approach building your skill set. So you build the foundational pieces of your app first while building the foundational components of your skills. As your app comes together and expands, so too does your skill set. This is as opposed to trying to learn everything all at once or trying to learn and, and implement concepts that are more advanced before having a full understanding of the foundational pieces that need to sit underneath them. Now, the next tactic for learning no code and being able to build your app while working full time is to prepare for a heavier load and make sure to manage that load correctly. So there's no way around it, but if you are wanting to build an app so that you can transition into a new career, launch a new business, or even just be able to control your lifestyle more, during that transitional period, this is going to require a heavier load from you. You can't just turn off whatever it is you're doing now and switch on the thing that you want to be doing. During the transition, it's gonna take more of your time. We actually recently released a video talking about how we personally escaped our nine to fives and became seven figure founders. And this was one of the main themes of it was handling that heavier load during the transitional period and just being able to manage it. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out because if you are in this situation as well, wanting to switch over to no code, to being an app founder, that's gonna be really useful for you. But what does this actually look like? Well, it, it depends on you, but typically it's pretty simple. It might mean waking up earlier, going to bed later, putting in some work on weekends, sacrificing some leisure or social activities for a period of time. And the key phrase there is for a period of time. I'm not suggesting you cut yourself off from the outside world for the rest of your life, but while you are making this transition, you have to shift your focus toward this. You have to make time. Otherwise, this goal of learning no code and launching your app is going to be impossible to achieve. The most important part of this, however, is managing that heavier load correctly. Now, the best advice I can give you is to take smaller amounts of time and put them into your calendar consistently versus taking big amounts of time and putting them into your calendar inconsistently. Because when you are skill building, especially 
but also building an app. That consistency and that repetition is what will help ingrain these concepts into your mind and actually develop the skills. But if you spread out those time spurts, it is going to cause you to forget a lot of things. You're not going to be able to build the muscles, so to speak, correctly. And a lot of the time spent developing the skills, developing your app is going to be refreshing yourself on what you previously built or previously learned. So the smaller, consistent amounts of time are so much more beneficial for you. The next tactic is to leverage structured training and coaching. You know, we have invested a lot of our own money into this, and it's not because we couldn't necessarily do certain things on our own. It's because we didn't want those things to take years of our time when those timeframes could be significantly compressed just by getting someone else's help. And on top of that, finding peers or a community that you can collaborate with can be really helpful as well. You know, one of the reasons why some of our own clients work with us is because they don't want to do this alone. It's the reason why we've invested in programs as well. When you are supported by or surrounded by people who are doing similar things as you, it's inspiring, honestly. It's motivating, even outside of the coaching or the training that you could be getting. Because the reality is there are going to be lots of ups and lots of highs throughout this process are going to be lots of lows too. And it's much easier to maintain consistency through those when you have other people around you just to talk with and collaborate with, and also just to see that they experience the exact same things and to normalize the process. Now, another tactic to implement is to set your expectations correctly, which is going to help you avoid burnout. You know, if you go into this thinking that you're going to launch your app within the next month, you are going to mentally run yourself into the ground because the learning process, the app development process, these things do not happen overnight. And so you have to set the right expectations. Beyond the time frame aspect, though, it's important to understand that this should feel hard. You know, it's easy to go into something like this and run into challenges and difficulties and to start thinking, you know, maybe I'm just not cut out for this, but this process should feel hard. You know, we've all heard the saying, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. And in this case, everybody is not doing it. So these challenges and difficulties, those are normal and you should expect to come up against them it's okay. And when they do come up in development, this is very, very simple, but step away and get fresh eyes. I can't tell you how many development issues are resolved when you just step away from your computer, go outside, go get a glass of water. When you come back, things usually feel a lot clearer. Now, there's one more tactic I want to share, and it's to focus on the gain, not the gap. There's a book called The Gap and the Gain, which I so appreciate, but the concept is simple yet really powerful. It's if you are always looking ahead at where you want to get to, and so you are always thinking about the gap between where you are now and where you want to be, it's always going to feel overwhelming. You're never going to feel like you are making progress because there is always so much more ground to cover. But if you instead look back and periodically assess where you are now compared to where you were a few weeks ago, a few months ago, a few years ago, then progress is inevitable. This is important for both your skill building and the development of your app, because the reality is neither of those things has a finish line. And so if you don't take the time to assess those milestones that you've hit, the goals that you've met, 
then it's going to be hard to create a sustainable practice with your skill development. And it's going to be hard to sustainably grow your business as a whole. All right. So there we have it. Use those tactics as you build your skill set and your app. They are going to help you reach your goals. And look, if you've found these helpful, then stick around and check out the content you're about to see on the screen next. It's going to help you take it even further.